I'm Joseph. Joseph Freeman, the uh, principal engineer on our performance engineering group. Thank you all for coming. So it's great, great pleasure to be here. Uh, we'll be talking about sort of our experimentation we've done in, in various different ways to <clears throat> add pr priority to resources that you're loading on your web page so the browser can be more informed and make better decisions on how to load your assets in a more powerful way. Um, so a little bit about Dotdash and why speed is important to us. Dotdash is, one of, is America's, one of America's largest print and digital publishers. We have a ton of, ton of traffic and uh, making sure our sites are speedy and are fast uh, is very important to us uh, because it keeps users coming back and it's very beneficial. Here are some of our popular brands that uh, are, are generate a tremendous amount of traffic. It's, as you can see, it's not just articles or videos, it's a wide variety of kind of content. And so it's not just optimizing one kind of thing, it's sort of optimizing the entire uh, experience across all different kinds of content. And, and that's what we do. We sort of experiment and find different ways to squeeze out performance in, in, in uh, many different areas. And uh, Fast Sites is one of our core tenets of, of, of the way we operate. Uh, Dotdash is, is focused on three, three pillars, essentially. One is best content, fastest sites, and fewest ads. Our team is, is responsible for making sure our sites are fast and they're continuing to be fast and always monitoring that and making sure we're not... Uh, there's nothing detrimental happening since we have so many changes happening all the time. So it can be, it can be difficult and we, we're always looking for ways to make things more faster. So, hi, I'm Ty. And um, like Joseph said, one of our um, big priorities, our core values is, is speed. And it, it matters in a few ways. Um, we want our users to have a good experience. We want them to have a smooth experience on the site, sites. And we also want them to be able to find the site. So we want performance sites that um, give us good search engine optimization. Those are valuable in themselves, but of course are instrumental to something else, revenue. Um, we want to keep our visitors and have many of them. And performance matters to that. Like Joseph said, we care a lot about performance and we have very fast sites. Um, and where performance is super fast, we've got to care about making it super duper fast. So the nanoseconds and the milliseconds matter a lot to us. And we keep experimenting with the latest, the latest features, performance optimizations, and at every level, at every level of our code and every level of our stack, we're really concerned to make things fast and keep things fast. We've experienced a lot of wins, some wins, as well as some surprises. And um, this evening, we'll just introduce three, the three related features um, that have to do with <coughs> performance in particular. We'll be looking at link headers, fetch priority, and early hints. Link headers. What are link headers? In order to really understand what link headers are, we need to understand what goes on on our page first. And then we can apply link headers and see what the advantage is. So here we just have an example of certain things you would have on your page, like a CSS uh, style sheet or a JavaScript file being loaded. You would have a, an image or a font. These are all... Uh, resources that are secondary to your page, meaning you have your HTML payload plus all these uh, things that need to be loaded afterwards. And as your, the browser sort of parses the page, it comes across your script or your CSS and it has to load it. If it's in the head, it becomes render blocking. And if it's in the body, it could be deferred or async and all these different techniques that we have for making them more performant. Um, <clears throat> and and sort of that's you know how the browser experiences loading these, these, uh, these resources. But perhaps if we can load them faster, the page will be faster, right? If you can load your script faster, if it's render blocking, of course, it'll, it'll finish <coughs> executing earlier. So one of the earlier techniques for this was adding a preload to your link header, to your link tag in your head, which informs the browser that, hey, we have an asset coming up, like the footer script.js. It's not yet needed, but it will be coming in the future. Start loading it now. So when we need it, 
I'll already have it in memory in the cache. I'll just load it up and it'll run. But the problem with that kind of solution and these kinds of solutions are the browser still has to download the entire or most of the HTML page, under, uh, parse it, understand it, and then, and then load up those, those assets. And this is where the link header comes in. A link header <clears throat> is sent together with the page response, together with the HTML page response, and informs the browser that, hey, we need these assets to be queued up and start loading them as soon as you, as you can. <clears throat> so here's an example of how your style sheet can be represented in a link header or your script or your image or your font. And, and the, the browser will then make a decision to how to load these assets early, earlier on. And here's an example of an improvement that, that you can see. So on the, on the left, you have your standard uh, request with no information, just a regular, as it encounters the, the CSS, or as it encounters your JavaScript, it loads it up. As you can see that, that blue line, that's the render blocking ends, and then it loads the images, et cetera, et cetera. By inserting a link header before, uh, during the, 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 the response to the HTML, it can start loading those assets. As you can see, they all shifted over to be before the, render blocking is, is done. And that helps significantly in, in performance. And we've seen uh, dramatic results in your FCP, which is your first contentful paint, as well as your largest contentful paint, because everything's loaded earlier. So you, you instantly get it faster and it's, it's displayed faster. Okay. Right. Um, the next feature that we'll talk about is fetch priority, formerly known as priority hints. Um, and it's a bit newer than link headers. What does fetch priority do? Um, well, the browser has certain defaults. It makes certain calculations when deciding to um, download resources and that determine the priority that the resources should be downloaded with, in, at. I'm not sure the preposition to use with priority. Um, but you, you, uh, a resource might be given a, a relatively high priority a relatively low priority. What fetch priority allows us to do is determine that to provide a hint, to give us a little bit of control, fine grain control of our own about that priority. So you can stipulate there is an example whether you want the priority in this case of the image to be high, medium, or low. Um, now it is only a hint, so it might not be perfectly obeyed. And there are, other, there are limitations here. For example, it's a new feature, like I said, not supported on all browsers, um, not yet at any rate, but um, Chrome does. And um, so, so a lot of your users stand to, stand to gain um, from this feature. What did it do for us? Here is a before and after of the waterfall. Sorry, it's, it's not perfectly proportional, um, but you can see the gains. Um, in particular, um, we applied it to the hero image, the yawning cat. Nope, nobody here is a yawning cat. Um, and you can see before we, um, we applied this, the, the yawning cat was, the image of the yawning cat, right? Was waiting, even, even um, had this relatively minor image, um, uh, 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 on the left rail, loading at the same time. Um, when we applied fetch priority, however, you can see a big difference. That yawning cat came through much quicker. It was given a higher priority. In fact, um, on, uh, uh, on a, a, a fast 3G, we saw something like a, from a 50 millisecond to 150 millisecond improvement in the lowest contentful paint um, for these pages. There was, there was a little sacrifice, it seemed, usually, in the first contentful page, but more than compensated <coughs> for by the improvement in LCP on that hero image. You'll notice something. Oh, maybe this was what the question was about. See that? There we have high here um, on, the, on the hero image, both before and after the priority was high. Um, so there's a surprise. Um, the explicit fetch priority did better than the default high or the high that we were getting from a preload on that, on that hero image. Um, and what 
was there previously was uh, a link header with the preload of the image, right? Um, and I had to tinker quite a bit um, with different configurations of the fetch priority and the preload, including both one but not the other, the other but not one. What seemed to work best was getting rid of the preload um, in the link header and having that fetch priority in line. Um, another surprise related is that it seemed that the browser was able to parse um, to discover these things before or as um, render blocking resources from the, he the head were, were loaded. Um, so a few surprises over there, early hits. And here it's helpful that uh, fetch priority is no longer called priority hints because uh, this can cause a lot of confusion. Early hints are a different animal entirely, but also have to do with, um, with uh, improving performance. So what we can do is send a 103 resource hit um, to the browser before you get the final 200 response, okay, before that, that 200 status arrives. And that allows the browser to be aware of resources, to do some work, to reduce the page load time. Um, once again, there are some limitations. So it's a new feature, like fetch priority, relatively new, and not supported on all browsers. And crucially, not very helpful when you already have a fast server, when, you're, when your server response is already you know, super fast, um, which is the case, as we'll see with us. Um, here's a, a, an illustration of, of the order um, of these, uh, the 103 and the 200, and how you might move certain, on the left, um, certain resources into the, um, into the early hints. Uh, is there some style scripts? In our case, we focused on playing around with this, with third-party libraries, um, and with fonts especially. And we saw some changes to the waterfall, and you can see the quite big changes when it came to those resources, top and bottom, before and after um, the application of early hints. So it makes a difference, but... In our case, the difference didn't really matter so much. We didn't see that kind of performance improvement that uh, the link headers and fetch priority gave us. So I'd like to finish off with, uh, during our exp experimentation, I'd like to share some surprises we came across. And I think it's valuable for the community and everyone should, of course, do your own experimentation, share your findings with everybody. Uh, so here are some surprises that are, are extremely valuable. I think it's we should uh, go through them. First is early hints. You will not see the 103 in the network tab. Apparently, it's not it's not yet supported in there. You have to go through Chrome's net export tool, which is not easy to work with because you have to go find your 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 asset being loaded. It's and it's it becomes a headache. It's not as simple as finding that request in in the network tab and looking for that response. That's the first thing. So you you may get your 103 set up and maybe there, but you don't see it coming in because it doesn't just doesn't register. So you have to really go deep in and swim with uh, deep 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 down. Uh, a second thing uh, we noticed is <clears throat> so currently our style sheets load the font through a a uh, a font face URL directive. Um, so you have the HTML, loads the CSS, which loads the font. If we put the font as an early hint, we would see it being loaded twice, once as an early hint and once as an asset off the style sheet. So the way we discovered how to fix that was you embed the URL in the style tag in the head. So it comes across it early on. And, and funny enough, it would not use the cached version that was already loaded, interestingly enough. A third thing we found was if you don't load that 103 resource early on, the browser will complain and say, hey, you requested this, this resource, but we don't see it being requested within, I think, three to, three to five seconds of the page. So these are some findings that we think would be very useful and we'd like to share with everybody. Um, questions? 
you said sure. first time. Um, so, you know, when thinking about how to, you know, you're, you're kind of creating your um, priorities, right? High, low, whatever, you know, or no priority. So um, I was a little surprised to find that you were using a hero image for priority. I think it would really just be bond, things like bonds and CSS. So that's what I've always tried to do. So just thinking about how you choose which resources you're going to prioritize. That's a, that's a great question. So just for the recording, the question is, how do you determine which resources are the priority ones for you, right? Right. So <clears throat> if you don't do any priority, the browser has its own internal mechanism to determine this is more important than the other. Things that are in the head are more important than in the body. Right. So with all these techniques, we're trying to inform the browser and say, hey, these assets are a little more important than, than other assets. The reason why we chose the, the, the hero image is we found that it's one of the largest contributors to LCP, largest contentful paint. Largest contentful paint seems to only fire once the hero, at least for us, in, in our situation, in certain, certain kinds of content, the hero image is always that, the blocking factor. So by giving it extra priority, we hope the browser will load it sooner, bringing our LCP a little lower and we had better scores on, on speed. That's the rationale behind our choosing. Of course, you need to choose what's more important for your sites. Uh, but in, in our particular case, uh, it was more important, of course, than, than, the, than, the, than the left rail, which is loading exactly at the same time, which is an ancillary, an ancillary image, which has no value for us in terms of our LCP, which sometimes might be even hidden by CSS, things like that. Jeff, you had a question? I think, I, I think you, you just answered my question. Because my, my question was, when you had the fetch priority and then you had auto, medium, low, high, I was wondering what auto did. But based on what you just said, I'm thinking that if you don't, if you set an auto, then the browser decides. Yeah, the browser will have its own. Uh, so let, let's go back quickly before here. So um, here. So before link headers, if you just load your site the way it is, you can see on the, <clears throat> on the left side, you have highest, high, low, highest. There's the browser sort of making its own decision here. What's what, what the priority is. Right. The link header itself informs the browser what's high priority. And you can see automatically, you have a high already, all the high assets get, get loaded. So you're informing the browser, the browser still makes its own decision. Uh, understanding what, there's some literature written about how the browser considers what's more priority than the other, but I think each browser has their own secret sauce on how to, how to do that to make things more. Priority. I feel like there'd be some interesting battles though, because there'll be, if you don't be, leave it as auto and then the browser is gonna be, based on like what other priorities you set other assets. So if you do a bunch of things in the header and the browser's like, well, no, I disagree with that. So if you put something in the header at a high priority, you don't know if it'll just probably just say, nah, I should, I'm just gonna- Right, now, now think about if all, if all your images have high priority, what does that do, right? right? Yeah. The browser's like, if everything's high, then what's really high? So you, yeah, right? they sort of sprinkle it in, like this is higher than the other. It's gonna be super fast. Right? Whenever it was super uh, any other questions? So we flash priorities, did it too? Last amount of time with the same image? Fetch, no, the same amount of time. It just downloaded earlier. Right? Let's see if we can yeah. show the image. Uh, so, it, see, as you can see, uh, maybe it, could, it, it might, might have taken longer because your bandwidth was, 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 was maybe higher usage. But at the end of the day, it loaded significantly before this would have loaded. Which affects your house. Yes. So, what type of uh, speed limits do you guys test? Because I feel like these things might change between different types of speed. So, like, I feel like this might be, might maybe in some way be less beneficial to like faster speeds or maybe even work the other way around. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, do you want to answer? Uh, yeah. Um, there are trade offs that I, I mentioned, you know, in, in certain metrics, uh, we've got balance, FCP, LCP, and other uh, core and non-core um, web vitals. Um, we didn't experience any negatives when it came to different networks. Uh, so, yeah, well, these results are shown for a fast three. And, and, and it's, like I said, it's a little... Um, the, the, the images aren't exactly in proportion, but you can see if you look at the 500 millisecond marks that, that we are quicker uh, with fetch priority. Now, but we didn't see any degradation when it came to uh, faster, you know, um, uh, networks. Hi, 
First of all, thank you. Great presentation. Uh, question about race condition. As you are tweaking with performance, for example, if you're playing not with the images, but with the JavaScript, and you're prioritizing JavaScript or lowering priority on it, and the functionality expecting that file, have you caught race conditions? And what do you use to test your performance improvements? Are you automating it or is it all manual? And Great. if you're automating, what do you use? All right. So first question is, um, if you're playing around with the priority, so the browser changes the way it, you're expecting it to work, do you run into race conditions? That's his right. second one is, how do we know that we're making improvement gains? Um, so the, we've been focused on sort of the, the LCP aspect of performance is what loads first and the fastest. Right. Uh, and generally, it's sort of what's in your head, right? And what's sort of you know above the fold and getting that rendered as quick as possible. Uh, generally, so these kinds of performances are already after you've already you know you've uh, minified your JavaScript, you concatenated it all together, you you've extracted only the parts you need. So it's already highly, highly, highly finely tuned. So we're we're very keenly aware of what we load and when we load it. So running into those race conditions, we haven't experienced yet. But it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing these kind of optimizations. To answer your second question, we are part of our team's uh, responsibility, and Russ helps out tremendously a lot, is making sure we have the right metrics in place uh, when changes are made and we don't have the, the, the degradation that we that can happen. And catching it early and finding out, you know, what made the change and trying and getting that fixed uh, early so we don't find it out, you know, later. But every step of the way, there's metrics, there's uh, Lighthouse tool, you know, Lighthouse is great. A web page test is great. And then not just that, but it's also getting that, that data and displaying it and making, making it front and center to your team. So they're always checking it and making sure. And that's sort of the culture of performance that we have here at Dotdash. And I think it's very valuable for any company whose bottom line is dependent on, 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 on speed and, and performance. Um, so I just like to thank Russell for, have, you know, leading up this team and, and, and his manager, uh, Ben Cochran and, and Brian, uh, Pichoni, who who really championed this whole idea of performance at the company. Now we we want to have this team. So. <laughs> um, I I noticed you. Well, thank you. But, uh, I noticed you said that you don't see early hints in the network. Yeah. Have you tried to use the performance resource timing API because you use early hints as an initiator type? Have you have you ever tried uh, So that? it comes in. It does, it comes in as other. On the on the on the initiator column, right? It doesn't come in as you know as you know from a, a script or anything like, like that. There's no really way to trace it back. There's um, a, there's a, um, an initiator type called early and, uh, and, and we have, have no idea how this will work. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so that that was part of the challenge is we, we would see the two fonts loading, right? One is loading from the head and one is from this other. We didn't you know where it was from, right? So then tracing it back was, was a challenge okay. until we found it in, in the net export tools and yeah. 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 That's a very, very, very powerful tool. It's truly powerful. Yeah, quick question. I'm just curious what your development environment looks like. Uh, like it strikes me that some of the changes you're making here that like require altering the response from the server. So like going back and tweaking the server, we uh, it just seems like potentially slow feedback cycle. It, it, it could be. So yeah, it's like, do you have any tips <laughs> on how to speed that up? Uh, it, it comes down to your uh, having a great relationship with your DevOps team. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we make some, and 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 uh, some of this is easier. Some parts are easier than others. I mean, some, sometimes sure. you can implement this locally, test it. Then you know you 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 deploy some sort of remote environment, do some remote tests. And so on, um, but you know, when it came to uh, early hints, also we we're serving from CDN, and that brings another layer of uh, complexity and you know, uh, um, sure. friction into the wire. So, I actually have a question, follow up exactly to that. Like, how did you set, set up the early hints specifically? Because it's such a new technology that uh, it's a question: where do you set that up? Can you speak to like more details on? Implementation. We implemented it through the CDN. Okay, at that layer, and experimented it. Experimented with it there. Yeah, we tried fonts. We tried scripts. We tried you know, everything. Yeah. Uh, so on the CDN rules, you're yeah. yes. Oh, wow. yes. Oh, that's interesting. Can I have a follow up to that? Sure. I could never get so, anyone. So to use do. fastly. Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, so is it exactly. a button switch? Or you're, uh, we, it, that, that we, 
He has a relationship with DevOps. So he <laughs> <laughs> the, the instructions on part, they're very good. Uh, there, there are very clear instructions on how to implement them. It, it wasn't too difficult to implement them, but it is, like you say, it's a slow process because that you've got to communicate with different people, set things, set things up. It's not. Um, you chose what to put in, right? You chose what to put in. We said what, which one we, you know, what the rules should be. Ah, based yes. on that, we. Yes. Uh, and we, uh, you buy your DevOps people, you know. Yeah, hands the DevOps people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a question. Did that contribute to what you tried to optimize? Right? Because obviously things that come from CMS, yes. like the, the yes. cat image, uh, yes. is harder to, to so, have as a rule. Exactly, right? Flaunt, exactly. Scripts, you, you, don't, you don't want, if you're doing it this way, you don't want to be doing it with um, resources that differ from page to page. Um, so that's why we focused on things like fonts, um, third-party resources that were used you know, across various um, pages. Mm -hmm. um, also, the, the idea is while the server's thinking, it's deciding what to render, what to send over. You're already hinting, hey, we need this ad library, we need this font, because it's consistent every single page. Uh, but the things that change, we don't know beforehand. And then you're taking advantage of that, that gap between requests to when actually the page is fully rendered and goes through the whole process to optimize that space of time. You already start preloading all of the assets. You want, you, want, you want assets used across various pages and state relatively stable ones, because you, you don't want a mismatch. You know, over time, if you if you're swapping out resources on the um, at the you know on the page, you want to, you want to keep the CDN layer sort of in sync with that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah sorry, yeah, continue. Oh. And, uh, Any other question? Yeah, and uh, to that uh, point, uh, you did mention that some of them are easier, right? Uh, can you talk about like what was easier? Uh, making happen comparing to other things like um, you mentioned three techniques. Which one was the easiest? Which the one was the easiest one? Well, each so these well, the easiest one is putting a fresh priority in your tag because you probably have control of your page. Everything else requires a server side check. You have to add a link header server side. The server has to be smart enough to know what's in the page to put in your link header, right? So you so I, I don't know how easy it is to say WordPress or or one of the off the shelf uh, you know stacks. Our our stack is custom so we have that ability to sort of yeah. play with those those parameters when it comes to early hints that's even before the 200 response so that's even you know deeper and you have that's to get you have to talk to different people but that that could be done say your cdn layer right mm -hmm. it might be easier not as hard you can set up your rules for your fonts right so it's a trade-off the trade-off um i would sort of try to present it in layers right your link link header then your fetch priority and then your early hits. Does it sort of support a sort of rad, you know, so smaller as you get? Yeah, I'm sorry, just to clarify, this might be a dumb question. They have to. You're, you know, you're, the header. Yeah. you're not doing anything with priority in your, in your links in the HTML. No, so we, we yes, so we generally you prefer the header over. We prefer the header because it's more, yeah. it's, it's more reliable. Right. Uh, Ty, what he said, he said many, many different permutations. So in the header, you can do it as prefrets, preload. There's many different ways you can define how you want that asset loaded. Uh, he, we, we found by removing the prefetch and then putting the priority hit, the, the fetch priority on the asset, on the image itself was the best that came out the best. So do your own experimentation and you'll find the best results. Yes. Okay. So we're just trying to understand. I'm sorry. So like they sorry, this is the last question because we got to move on to the next presentation. Oh yeah, no worries. I we'll have we'll have speakers after the event to, to chit chat <laughs> yeah. as well. I promise I'll be faster if I just okay. get it all out and we'll go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you were talking about like adding this on the CDN level, but then we were uh, wondering like you know with a lead image or something like that. You're saying that you also have this like you can give these hints and preload clues to the browser on at the actual page level, like in the markup itself as well, not just correct. Okay. Cool. I just want to make some closing remarks. I think it will be beneficial for everyone. Um, this is a very, it was a very technical talk, but I think uh, we can learn a lesson from everything, and especially from priority hints when our, our lives are very chaotic and it's coming, everything's coming towards us and it's, everything's bombarding us. Adding a little priority to our lives will sort of make things a little <laughs> more orderly. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, so hopefully a little priority helps. And if you don't know, if you, if you can't decide what to do priority, maybe go to the server. You get a mentor. They'll, 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 they'll help you out. And they can, if you can get a link with them, and maybe perhaps you, they will inform you on what's a high priority when you sort of can't figure it out yourself. So, yes, I think we can all learn from uh, in the human aspect how to improve ourselves from te technology. So thank you for coming, and thank you for listening. Thank you.